Hey everyone, this is Dave DeHilster and welcome wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You have reached the Saturday Science Chats. Hey, 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 it's David DeHilster. Oh, look at all these things popping up. Yes, I haven't been here for a while, but Unfortunately, my dad was in the hospital for almost a month. He was having some trouble, heart troubles and stuff. And, uh, of course, those things take priority. But I'm um, really happy to be back. Uh, he is at home, um, doing okay. Um, it's a new normal for us, but uh, it's going to continue. we got a great experiment, actually. that has to do with uh, current and magnetism. That's really pretty revolutionary, and it's pretty simple to do. Anybody can do it. So uh, we're going to be uh, getting back to our science. But I want to welcome everybody today. I'm sure lots of people are staying away because they know, hey, I'm not an etherist, but it's going to be a fun day because I've been thinking about this for a very long time. So um, what are we talking about today is, is modern ether theory dead? Is there a possible fatal flaw? And I've been thinking about that for many, many years and I've been thinking about arguments I hear from etherists as well and all the objections. But this is really an exercise in, you know, logic and trying to figure something out. I'm not here. There's no vendetta here. Um, I, it's, it's, you know, it's, I, I say this constantly, but uh, my father and I have a different model that's not ether. And that's not why I'm trying to kill ether. I'm trying to figure out why I don't like it. What is it about it? Is there something there that I could finally say to myself, you know, I don't believe it's a good model. I already do. Don't I don't believe it's a good model, but it doesn't mean I'm right about that. But is there something over these decades since I've not been an etherist, I've known about ether for a long time that could be possibly fatal for me? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, ether could be right. Absolutely could be. But anyways, I want to congratulate you all for watching, uh, and <clears throat> and I do want you to think about subscribing. We have 995 subscribers to our YouTube channel for the uh, John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society YouTube cha channel, the CMPS YouTube channel. So please, 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 if you um, uh, can just take a second. It just, it's real easy. If you're on your phone, just put your finger there. If you're on a computer, just put your mouse. Subscribe to the John Chappelle um, uh, Natural Philosophy Society's YouTube channel and get us over a thousand. Well, when we get over a thousand, we can start taking donations directly on that. Of course, I do want to thank my dissident science YouTube uh, subscribers. It keeps going up. I mean, it's actually picking up quite a bit. We're almost up to 4,200 subscribers and I want to thank all of them and all of you for watching. And I know a lot of people do watch this um, recorded. In fact, I got a lot of messages because this is a hot topic I know because so many people in the world are etherists who are outside the mainstream. And so um, if you are watching recording as well, remember to hit that like button. It really helps us too because every time you do, the algorithms out there that calculate who should be watching what, will that certainly helps us. So please like and subscribe and congratulations to you for even sitting here and become, trying to become a critical thinker. And as Aristotle who, or whoever says this, um, uh, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. And uh, that's so true. Of course, we are all in this together. Let's fight the illogical mainstream science, not ourselves. I'm not here to tell etherists they're wrong. <clears throat> I'm telling you my perspective on it. And those people who um, also are etherists or non-etherists, uh, we're not here to uh, get on, you know, fight each other. And I'm not here attacking you. If you're an etherist, I think you're stupid. That's, that's ridiculous. I've told you many times, uh, ether could be correct. Uh, it could be the correct model. <clears throat> So let's not fight each other. Let's support each other. Let's talk about this in a logical way and keep an open mind too. You know, just don't, you know, I've, I see dissidents as closed minded as people in the mainstream and it's sad and we don't want to be that. Um, we are all wrong and some ideas are just less wrong than others. My dad, I think, said something like that. So I've uh, <clears throat> taken his uh, saying. So let's, let's not fall in love with your ideas because all of them are wrong. Something better is going to always come along. Uh, doesn't mean that it won't build on what you've done, but it's certainly uh, you, you become emotionally involved. That's when you don't do science anymore. 
So we're wishing my dad being well. He's working on his third book and on the physics of electronics. He is back at home. Um, yeah, he had some uh, problems with the heart, but uh, we're in the new normal with him now. And uh, we're really glad to see him. I'm glad to see him back at our family at home. So just a shout out. Uh, and of course, our mission is to be an organization that above all, above all promotes critical thinking without malice. That is, if you come to our group and say, the Big Bang's wrong, we're not going to laugh at you and say, go to school and learn why it is, it is correct. No, because we have the freedom of our thought. No one can put that into a prison and make us uh, think the way they want to think. We're allowed to think as we want to, but we have an organization that supports and publishes and promotes serious scientific work outside the mainstream to provide a forum uh, about modern topics in physics, cosmology, philosophy, mathematics, and other subjects to provide a forum presenting serious paper and theory without fear of censorship and to be running entirely by its memberships. Uh, if you want to visit and um, this is your first time watching this, go to beyondmainstream.org. It's our online magazine for critical thinkers. It's really great. I think we have over 100,000 views on that already. Um, I know for some people that's not a lot, but for us being uh, uh, on outside of mainstream, that's really good. We get quite a few reads every day. So hundreds of people read it every day, and it is done in a uh, sort of a magazine forum, a uh, um, magazine type uh, a publication. So it's not technical. You're not going to go in there and find tons of equations or anything like that. So check that out. It'll tell you what's wrong, what we think is wrong with mainstream science, which is quite a bit. And uh, everything should be up for criticism. And uh, if you want to join into our with uh, join in our critical thinking community at naturalphilosophy.org, just go there. You can register and start talking about all the subjects you like outside the mainstream. Uh, we're we're not doing anything like aliens or conspiracy theories or things like that. We're really we, we, we let's concentrate on things like we don't know what light is, things like that, small things like that. So that's what our focus is. And of course, we do have a Wikipedia. You can go to wiki.naturalphilosophy.org. It's a true Wikipedia. No, you can't edit it. If you want to add your stuff in there, we'll be happy to help you with that uh, because um, an open source like Wikipedia is for consensus. It's not allowed to have dissident um, ideas. It's then called pseudoscience. You know, so uh, Wikipedia is the opposite of critical thinking. It's the um, consensus of what we think is right now. And what we think is right now is always wrong because there are people working on better stuff all the time. Also, it's really vital, folks. I mean, this organization right now is holding on by its, the string of its bootstraps or whatever you want to say. Um, we have monthly and annual uh, memberships that you can uh, have um, subscribe to and help us out. As little as five bucks a month, as little as 35 in a year. You can make donations. And right now, without our donations, some a good sized donations, we don't survive. And if this eventually becomes to we can't pay for the software and the subscriptions and everything that keeps this thing going, it's gone. Um, you know, I don't I'm not wealthy wealthy any independent. How much does it cost us? Twenty three hundred dollars a year. That's not much. And I know lots of people watch us. We have over 5,000 subscribers between the two channels that we're broadcasting live right now on. So just think about it. If you like this, you know, it's not like there are 17 other, uh, oh, I'll go to the other organization that allows people to talk about the Big Bang being wrong. There are none. We are it. So uh, please, please, please consider this, uh, uh, making a monthly or annual contribution just go to naturalphilosophy.org and you click on the membership. In fact, I'll put the banner up there so you guys can see how to do that. So there you go. Um, you can also donate that. So if you go to membership.naturalphilosophy.org, you'll get there. I know I, po I pound on this, but folks, right now, we're in, we can't pay for it without some generous donations. And if those people are no longer doing that, we are not paying for it. And you wonder why we're, our website isn't up and running, okay? Uh, or why our server got um, uh, hacked, which we were hacked for five years. People, Anonymous, Anonymous in Brazil decided they didn't like um, our 
uh, anti-Einstein, anti-Big Bang or anything. And uh, so now we have to pay a couple hundred dollars a year just to keep our server from being hacked. So all of those kinds of things add up and we do need it. It's vital. So thank you so much to those people who are doing it as well. I want to thank, thank our patrons, Nick Percival, Dr. Cynthia Whitney, Ramsey is his pen name, all the annual and monthly memberships. Of course, we do need your vital support. You know, vital means life and death, and that's exactly what we have. Okay. Um, I am looking for uh, hosts and guest hosts. Uh, I know uh, Franklin was doing that for a while. He did that for many years, but we're still looking for <clears throat> some people. Do you enjoy talking with other people? Do you... Uh, do you have an interest in supporting critical thinkers, even if they disagree with you? If you do, contact me, <clears throat> and I'd love to start co-hosting with somebody. And then eventually have it so that we'll have somebody here every every week um, and be able to keep up this kind of level, because we do want to keep it at a certain level. We just don't want to sort of come on and, oh, what are we going to talk about today? So uh, I am looking for people. So if you are interested and you like this kind of stuff, hey, contact me and we'll talk about it be happy to talk to you about it okay to the main reason why people are here or not here today i'm sure there's a lot of people that are staying away from this for sure um and that's okay uh the good thing is i know the people who are going to stay away are absolutely going to watch this recording so if you're watching the recording and trying to find find out what did david find oh you're gonna have to find out um here and we can discuss it as well but uh <clears throat> Um, is modern is modern ether theory dead? Is there a possible fatal flaw? And uh, I've been thinking many years about this. So talk about myself. I'm a computer scientist. And I do this with other people, folks, okay? I'm just treating myself as someone else. If we had another host, they could do it, and I would be just representing, but I'm presenting myself. So I'm a computer science, an artist. Yes, I do draw, I paint. I was represented by the L.A. County Museum of Art when I was in L.A., Musician, filmmaker, yep, I made a documentary film about eight years and a YouTube vlogger, that's what I'm doing here. And uh, have, was interested in physics and cosmology after I met uh, Dr. Ricardo Carrozzani in the 19, early 1990s. Got my bachelor's degree in mathematics, architecture, and uh, my master's in linguistics and works in the area of AI, specifically with human uh, language, and, and I'm a co-author of a computer language. Yeah, I wrote a computer language, it's pretty cool and uh it's now becoming popular people are saying oh machine learning doesn't do it by itself so anyways um david is also oh, yeah i already said that um i met in 1996 how to get in this um specifically this organization i met john chappell because i was wanting to uh present dr carazani's work he's the founder of the natural philosophy alliance from 2005 to 2013 i made a documentary called einstein wrong the miracle year after working with uh, my father um and we co-authored a book called principia mathematica 2. Uh, my dad also had a book before that called gravity is not free and um it's called it's a complete toolkit for hacking the physical universe take a look at it it's for sale worldwide on amazon both ebook you can get it for three bucks ebook and the ebook is really good looks great on a phone i made sure that happened and of course i'm currently working in the supercomputing department of lexus nexus specializing in creating digital human reads for and is i am the president of this group for now hopefully soon someone else will come along and do that it's uh i've done this quite a bit not enough um here's my personal philosophy um about all this you know i look for truths no matter what their consequences are um i know only a very few people that really do that i know people in general want to do that but a lot of times they'll get hooked on some system in their head or some model in their head and then they'll work on that and that's fine but I guess I'm a little different, even with our own model, I'm constantly looking outside, looking at new ideas, looking at new models, looking at new ways to do things. And, you know, I really just try to look for what I think is a better answers. There's not really truths, so it's really just better answers. So I give myself 100% ability to be wrong. I don't care about that. Um, I also give my 100, uh, myself 100% ability to find better truths um something again i don't see people doing they sort of get stuck on something you tell them there's some problem and you got to work on it and i even know my my dad and i have a bottle we know what the problems are um i do not attack ideas because i don't agree with them i think that's probably why a bunch of people probably are staying away today because they feel i'm going to be out there just you know 
telling everybody, you, you believe in ether, you're dumb. Of course not. Um, ether could be completely right on, uh, you know, and I could be completely wrong on this. Um, I tack them to decide if they are better truths for me. And that's what I do. I tack my own model constantly. My, my, own, my, own, my dad and I's model, I, I, I tack ether, I tack um, all the models I know. Jeff Yee has a model. I look at that. I attack. I said, where, where, where can this be wrong? Um, those kinds of things. So, and I also don't defend my scientific beliefs or believe one should do that. Um, again, even among the dissonance folks, I will tell you, I wish I could tell you that we are all this way. And it's really hard. And I think that's one of the reasons when I host these things, I'm really excited to talk about people's models. Like Jeff Yee, it's a great model. You know, it really is. Um, I know you know the news working on a model. Um, the 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 people that we're going to be giving lifetime achievement awards this year on uh, during these Saturdays, they do great models. If if I don't believe them myself that those are the way it works, that's my belief. It doesn't mean that those people are wrong. It's still amazing. They're still amazing models. People still have amazing ideas. I like models, of course, that are much better and much more physical than they are poetry. I, I don't like poetry. Man, you see this hat here? Um, I'll remove this here. See this hat here? I wear that hat because I just don't like people talking about systems that are just kind of systems, you know? I can't stand science poetry. Let's talk the physical world. That's what I'm interested in. Um, and we need to keep sort of wide-eyed and curious like children and open to um, new and amazing ideas, you know, um, even if they're not their, our own. I think a lot of people come here because they sit around sort of like, here's my ideas about my, here's my theory, and I'm going to see, oh, will David say something that, I, that my theory can explain, and maybe he'll like that, and he'll come my way, or, those, or somebody else that's talking will say something, and I'll tell them about my theory, and how that my theory can describe that, and they'll come my way. Yeah, that, I just don't see that as a really good way to, about, about going about things, you know, it's, this is sort of like, sit in a room somewhere with people who are critical thinkers and like to think about these things and just everything's valid everything's up for sale everything's uh, ready to be attacked everything you know there shouldn't be nothing sacred and it's really hard to find people really like that because we're emotional beings and i understand that but um i don't know um i have some some ideas about why I'm this way emotionally. My father's that way too. I won't get into it. It's very personal, but we even think about that. And I think I, my father and I uh, really are like this. They're, they're, um, there's this uh, joke from, um, I really love, it sticks in my mind that's very relevant to what I'm talking about. It was the, the TV show MASH. MASH was a sitcom that had serious side about the Korean War that was done in the late 70s and early 80s, you know, 70s and, and, and 80s. And um, it had a scene it where, you know, had this, uh, I don't know, corporal, I guess, who was like in charge of the communication of the group. And then the, the um, I don't know if it's a major, but the guy in charge and they're playing poker. And um, the guy, the, the little guy in the group, the, the, the furthest down the totem pole, um, won the hand and he picked up the pot and he started counting all the money. And um, King Colonel Potter was his name, turned to his name as Radar. He goes, Radar, you can trust me. He goes, I know, sir. He says, but you continue to count the money. He goes, I know, sir. And that's the way you got to be. Just because someone tells you something, you can't. It's that that it's that idea that some people attribute to um, Aristotle, which is basically, you know, you got to keep that m mindset of you can entertain something, but you that you don't accept, but you should be able to un entertain it. And I think that's the kind of attitude. So that's sort of my personal philosophy um, here. So, um, hello. Why aren't you moving? There we go. All right, full disclosure, ether as a model for light could be right. I've told you that before. Uh, I want you to understand, I'm not here to bash it and tell you you're all wrong. It could be right. I could be wrong about all of this. Um, and, and I will tell you this, you can say it, I've heard ethers pretend to say it, 
they don't mean it. I am, and, and this is not a dig on them. I'm telling you what I see. I'm not here. I'm not going around with some emotional thing. I don't know what it is about people who want Ether to be the model, but you just never hear them say, well, you know, Ether could be wrong. You don't hear them. They, they go into giant blast mode of how it's right and huge explanations. I don't hear it. And when I when I tell that to some people, of course, it's going to be wrong. But if you know how human beings, we can sort of detect when a person isn't sincere about what they're saying. That's what I hear. So I'm only reporting what I've seen. And this was before I even had my own model. My dad and I had This was the same way 10 years ago. And we didn't have a model. I told people and they knew that. Um, myself with my own model. This is what I do. I can constantly look at other models. I constantly try to find good ideas from other models. I constantly try to break my own model. I constantly try to break other models. This is what should we should be doing. This is what engineers do. This is what, you know, you think SpaceX, why are they so good? Because they blow the heck up of rockets. They're going to try something, doesn't work. They blow it up and they go, oh, they, do you think they go around? Well, I, it can work if we do this. And if I tweak this over here and if I make them this size, the eighth or this shape, and it goes this, and it's got this magical property. And folks, if it's broken, broken, let's fix it and go on and whatever. Again, I don't see etherists doing that. I don't, I, it's like, an, I don't think I've ever heard etherists say, you know, your model's pretty, well, not true. One etherist have. That was uh, Duncan Shaw. He did. He gave us, he congratulated my father and I on our, our model. Only, only etherists to do that. It's bizarre. I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> these are my personal aha moments. This is just to give you an idea. Things that blew my mind right away. Uh, Neil Adams, when I saw his Earth, Expanding Earth videos, blew my mind. I knew right away it was right. I was just completely blown, um, blown away. And Yonel Denu, when I saw his underwater ex experiments uh, that showed things look like magnetic fields, I said, blew my mind, blew my mind. I read um, the, actually the universal cycle theory, not the infinite, that was before the infinite universe theory or model, whatever he calls that. Uh, and, but the universal cycle theory I read about neo mechanics in infinity blew my mind, called him up, talked with him on the phone for an hour and a half. My dad presented in 2015 and I don't remember April, June or whatever. And he put up this diagram about me, um, um, ether and, um, ether. Oh my gosh. Did I say that? Um, he put up this model for light and it, I couldn't understand it. And then he put his hands up and did this. And all of a sudden I understood it and that blew my mind. And the, the, actually there was a, my, my mind was blown again when I saw some of the models that Jeff E was doing for the nucleus and why electrons were staying in the SPDF orbitals where he was con attributing that to the forces, the Coulomb force and magnetic force. And of course, our, um, my, my father design model would say that's a G2 magnetic force. But regardless, that blew my mind. And ether for me was not, did not blow my mind. Um, so I don't know why. And that's why I'm here. I'm not here to rag on anybody. This is a personal thing. I thought it would be interesting because I did do a survey on my website, uh, on my YouTube channel, which has over 4,000 people. And uh, let me see here what the survey says. Um, I, I put on th uh, three things. There it is. Community. Here we go. Okay. We have how many? We don't have many votes yet because it's very young, but it's got three days, 19 votes is all. But I put three things down. I believe 100% theory, 100% uh, that Ether exists is one of them. Ether is the best model, but it could be wrong was another one and then ether does not exist so out of that 19 the percentage wise 21 percent say i believe 100 percent that ether exists uh, again this is not from mostly people these are people who are not necessarily dissonance at all um uh, my channel is full of a lot of people who are not talk about science at the level we do but uh, a lot of them do for sure and then the second one was Ether is the best model, but it could be wrong. 37%. Yay. That's good. And then uh, Ether 
does not exist, 42% of the people, almost, not 50%, but 42% said that um, it doesn't exist. So that gives you an idea. So even though we are in the dissident world, we're not in the majority of, in the sense of ether exists. And if you look at our, our organization, the CMPS, for people who have models, um, the ether model by far is the most popular. Um, here's some principal objections to ether, of course, laser light. How do you have laser light go through a medium? It's like saying, I'm gonna shoot a sound wave that's gonna be a one inch wide and go 20 miles. Yes, it does span out. I do know, folks, you shoot a laser to the moon, it spreads out to be at two miles, but it certainly keeps within a, it doesn't follow what a med is uh, waves in a medium for sure. That looks much more like particles. And of course you have the wave particle duality where ethers tend to ignore the par particle properties or claim to solve them, which I'm not seeing a good explanation for it. I have seen attempts, but not good ones in my opinion. In my opinion, folks. And then uh, while most particle models ignore the wave properties, um, not all. Um, so um, so my, the big question is my, it's, this is from my own curiosity, really. I don't believe ether is a good model, in my opinion. It's just, there's too many problems with it. Um, it, it. I think I've talked about this before. I think it comes from a fixation that we want to make physicality for light. And from there, we say that's the only way when it really isn't now. We have a absolutely, um, in my opinion, way better model now than that, um, which didn't exist too many years ago. But again, it's my opinion, but I just, I personally, like 42% of the people in my survey, don't believe Ether is a good model. Um, could I find a game stopper, one that would finally get me to a point where I say, it's dead to me. Um, right now, even with this game stopper, I've only come up with it in such a short time, I can't tell you if it's done that for me, but it may. I have to let it roll around my, my mind. I think about it every day, well, I used to think about it most every day, whether ether was correct or not, or something like my dad's model for light is more correct, would be a, is a better model. And of course, I have been searching for a killer argument for for many years, and I finally, talking with my dad, who just didn't care about this, to be honest, he's like, why is my son talking about ether? I don't care about this. You know, because he's got a lot of work, oh, of a uh, lot of, how do you say, um, things to do with his life, you know, and uh, great research, like this one experiment we're gonna talk about. So anyways, um, this is the reason I'm asking this question for me, okay? And what ether I'm talking about, and we're, I'm gonna talk about this before I get to my explanation, because I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen in the explanations that really make me mad, because people, I'll talk about it, but let's go follow my slide, Dave. What ether I'm talking about. I am talking about Ether as a medium, a luminiferous ether, it doesn't mean it doesn't, can't describe gravity, okay? I'm gonna say that five more times. Luminous, when I talk about light as a, um, uh, ether as a medium for light, it can do everything it wants to. But I'm talking about light, and I'm talking about ether, and I'm talking about the idea that light is waves through a medium. That's it, okay? Nothing else that the medium in which light waves propagate. Now, if you go to the average person who knows science a little bit enough, they're gonna say that, okay? And I'm gonna get into this other, these other arguments that I hear constantly from etherists. It's not because I think ether is wrong. I don't like bad argumentation, folks. I don't like it. Physics place. Okay, what it is not. It's not the material that fills the region of the universe beyond the terrestrial sphere. Why do I say this? Well, that's what ether was before they talked about luminiferous ether. You know, the ether was is out there. It's drifting in the ether where people start redefining or at least redefining. I'm talking about ether as a medium for light and whatever else you want to put on it. If you want to make it do gravity and magnetism and all that stuff, more power to you, okay? Um, I'm not looking at this as some poetic interpretation of the world, word, and it's something that is not a medium. So if it's not a medium, I'm not calling it ether. Um, look, you know, I study words for a living. Um, one of the things about people with words is they, they become poets. 
And what we try to do in all languages is try to come up with a word that means something so that when we all say it, this is what it means, okay? So it's very important. One of the things we learned in our organization, try to understand how the person talks, okay? What we use. What I am claiming is that if you would get 100 scientists who know what ether and have heard of that, they're going to most all say that it's a medium in which light supposedly the waves are propagated. They'll probably mostly say too that it's been discredited, but that's a different story, okay? This is what I mean. This is what I mean. This is what I say ether is. Okay. This is pretty simple. This is what sound does. This is what water does. This is what ether does. It's a medium where you have waves through compression and rarefication. Watch the particles. See this red thing going back and forth? It's not moving around. Very crucial in my argument today. So, you can see these little red particles here and there that are staying in basically in, a, in, in some place and that you have waves going by. This is a wonderful diagram. This is the physical def, the physics definition of ether to most people. Okay. <laughs> I can hear people screaming at me already, but believe me, I got slides coming up because I know these screams are coming. Um, my guess how many etherists feel right now very angrous angry at this entire topic angry at me and consider me arrogant and disdainful all people who believe in ether i'm sure there's some people like that waiting for the supposed fatal flaw to show how this objection is wrong without even truly understanding the objection that, that i believe that i believe is going to happen and i'll tell you what else can happen as well to me starting to get closer to the flaw this is where i started to think this is where the flaw originated from uh, this idea and i know i can hear people screaming dave this is the way old ether is it's this this is old ether it's not we're going to talk about that as well i'm talking about luminiferous ether if you have a medium in space with light going through it it is some kind of reference point it's got to be somewhere the earth's going to go through it the sun's going to go through it yeah there may be wind with it if you believe in magnetic fields as yonel does yonel Denu, who i think is great scientist gave the world a great thing he's an etherist and he thinks that he says that magnetism is is the uh circular flows coming together of particles in this case he calls them ether of course if it's ether then if you have circular particles then magnet magnetic fields but bend light that's another problem, but I won't talk about that. So anyways, space to me is empty, is a place where mass goes. Yes, out in space, it's full of stuff, but there's space and there's stuff. Okay, folks? All right. All right. That's, way I, that's what I'm talking about. So space is in a foam. Space, the reason we have the word space in language, and not only in English, but in thousands of languages, there's the word space. And that is, is, is a thing to call where there is nothing. Yes, we think, thought in the beginning there's nothing, but we feel air, we know there's something there. In space, we know there's stuff there. I'm, not, I'm saying that ether in space has, has to be, in, if there's the earth and sun going through it, it's gotta have some kind of reference frame. And there in one of the problems, it lies. And I'm, that's not the problem though. It just points to the problem, in my opinion. So, you know, ether compared to a wind, stationary compared to what? Oh, but it's not modern ether, Dave. It's not the way. We're going to talk about that too, because that's a, that's a run away from the problem answer. Okay. Mainstream, of course, killed it, supposedly, ether. Einstein says ether is not needed. He postulated the photon. Of course, people say photon can't work because it can't show wave particles properties but of course the double slit uh experiment where we supposedly shoot one particle at it that uh, i disagree with that idea but even if it was one you can't explain that interference pattern some other people can some people yes can but in this case um the ether it looks really great for the double slit except for the particle side so again if you ask 100 physicists from 100 universities ether is dead luminous ether is old the photon is is there it's got a wave 
um, particle duality problem. We can't do it. But ether did not, does not die among the, the, the dissidents in the 20th century. Um, there's what I would call fixation on the um, Michelson Morley experiment. Um, I really do think it's a fixation. Um, if you have a model for light, who cares about that? You can explain it, yeah, but um, I would tell Michaels and everybody fixated on Michaels and Morley. Do you have an explanation for light? Oh, it's ether. Great. Okay, then answer, you know, let's get over the objections that are real objections. Just tell me how laser works, first of all, before I go worrying about whether you can explain Michaels and Morley. So there is some fixation on that. And when I think we should be looking at other things, there's also some kind of fixation of explaining gravity with ether. I don't know why. Um, I don't know. It's sort of, I think a lot of that comes maybe from the idea that um, I believe in ether. So um, ah, it's so great. And it's just a model we, we've been trying for 400 years and no one's got it. But th th besides that, we got 400 years. Um, it's there. And uh, not only that, we can describe gravity. So it's got to be a great model because it can describe gravity as well. And of course, ignoring the problems with ether, which they do. I never saw a paper by etherists say, this is how, oh, no, no, that's not true. I saw a laser, I did. I saw on the internet, I did see somebody. It was some like spiral kind of thing. So at least they're trying to address it. So that good, kudos to them. Um, what I'd like to see etherists have, entertain, entertain object, uh, objections without, ex oh, oh, what attitude etherists should take. Oh, entertain objections without accepting them. Yeah, you should. You don't have to accept them, but you should entertain them. And I think most just, you know, reject them without truly trying to understand the objection. That's my opinion. Um, know that all theories and models are wrong. I wish etherists would say that. They would be less, you know, so darn certain of it. Um, and uh, acknowledge that there are other valid models out there. There is. My father's got a model for light. It's really good and it solves the wave particle duality. Um, it's not perfect, no, but there is another model out there. So it's, before we didn't have one that was really a legitimate contender, now we do. So at least admit it. Yeah, I'm an etherist. I believe in the medium and waves going through it. Uh, these are my properties and stuff, but yeah, there are other valid models and this could be wrong. <sighs> I wish there are people in this chat right now that will not say that and they're etherists, so. All right, I'm making enemies left and right. Uh, and it doesn't matter, because I could be totally wrong and all you etherists could be right, so. But that doesn't bother me. There's no emotional attachment I have to that. Um, bad arguments against ether. This is this is one I came up with last night. It was, I, I think this earliest morning, like five in the morning, and I write myself emails so I don't forget this. Changing the physical definition of ether. You know, Dave, you're talking about the old ether. I'm talking about the new ether. Well, um, no, shift. I came up with this. Shift the name, shift the blame. What? That's what you're doing. That's a really good saying. Shift the name, shift the blame. What does that mean? Oh, no, Dave, the problem with ether with lasers, that's because that's the old ether. It's not the new ether. We don't have those problems. Well, tell me how I explain it. Well, and then I hear science poetry. That's the second part, using science, poetry, and not logic. And then I hear all this poetry about it, and I'm trying to get a physicality on it, and I'm looking, listening to it, and it's got energy, and it's got, you know, um, uh, fields that, that that people, and I said, what's that field? And they said, it's field. It's got charge. And I said, well, how does that charge? You put pluses and minuses, and there's a magical thing in the universe that makes them come together. It's just full of, full of poetry. But when you shift the name, that is, if you say, oh, that objection doesn't exist because the ether I'm talking about is this ether over here. It's no longer ether. You're gonna have to call it something else because ether is a medium. But if you all, but I don't think that's even really, that's what's happening. I don't think people will call it something different. I think they're just shifting it over this way to shift the name, shift the blame. That's what I think is happening. So talk about why ether is correct without addressing the objections. That's another one. When I, so I went go up and I'm, I'm going to tell you this fatal flaw. People are going to come on with me and they're going to think live or in the chat and say, Dave, ether explains everything. And then they go into this long explanation. Like, and, and what is happening? Let's say we're in a debate class, right? We're in a university debate class. And the debate is, um, 
uh, is this objection to lumin, lumin, luminiferous ether valid? And so the person gets up there myself and I gave you my objection, which isn't here yet. And then we get all, we get up there and everybody's talking and it's like, um, I talk and I give you my objection and I rest my case for that part of it. And then you, and the next thing is there's a rebuttal. So the, the etherist gets up and this is what happens. I get emails, I get texts, I get comments on, I already got comments on this. I got po people literally doing this. They come in and go, you kidding? Ether explains everything and they go and explain it. There's no objection. Of course, they don't know the objection, but what that's what's going to happen. So the next person in this university during this debate gets up and says, oh, by the way, um, Ether can explain everything. Look at this. It explains this. And I have a theory of Ether that explains this and this and this and this is how it works. And they get into this explanation. And then the that part's done. And let's just say it was just the two part debate where you do pre present and the person goes and then you're judged. Basically, what you would do is get a failing grade, and the person's going to say, "What are you talking about? This, you know, Ether is right. I just explained it. That wasn't the question. The question was David Hilster po po uh, posited a an objection that he sees as a fatal flaw in the model, and you never even talked about it. Or you, you know, the other one is what I call sort of the Star Wars Luke Skywalker effect. You have this big looming objection, and you, you. This is what the mainstream does to new models all the time. Models like Jeff Yee's model, or, or my father and I model, or um, Borkert's model, or Lionel Denou's model, or all the other models that are out there. They come in, they look at it, and they see on line 45 an equation that doesn't match the equation for mainstream look at line 45 it's flawed the entire uh theory is collapses and that's the other idea you know you you make an objection a person supposedly has an answer to it nope that's it that's fatal uh, your, your your objection is completely explained uh, why it's wrong and they do a very cursive kind of sort of high level try to attack and then go back into their explanation how ether is right so this, look, I'm not making these things up. I didn't come up and try to make these things up. I've seen these for years and years and years. My goal here today is as a person of the 42% of us who don't believe Ether is a good model, I'm trying to give you my perspective on it. And you guys could be right. Oh my gosh. All right. Reasons for ignoring objections. Um, there's, they have no answer to an objection. That's one of the big ones. If you have an objection, like how do you do laser light, and then you go, you hear a tirade of how their ether model explains a thousand things, and you go, what about laser light? Maybe they don't have an answer to it. Instead, what they should say is like, you know, I haven't, I don't have an answer to it. That's a great question. I think an ether model, there's perhaps a way we can do that. I haven't found it. Oh my gosh, that would be the most wonderful thing to hear from an etherist. I would just, I, I you know. I don't know what I'd say, you know, I'd buy you lunch. Um, don't take time to understand an objection. That's, that's true too. Have fallen in love with ether, emotionally invested, have invested too much time and emotion to ether to give it up now or to look at its problems. So these are my observations again. So here comes, dun, 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 dun. it's coming. So um, let's get to another banner here because I, uh, I don't know if anybody wants to come on, but there we go. Take this banner down. Again, if you can like and subscribe, hit that like button if you're liking what's going on. Okay, hit the subscribe button. Let's get to a thousand subscriptions for the CMPS organization and keep hitting, hitting those uh, subscriptions for my channel, Dissident Science. If you like this, there's no place in the world where we even talk about this or open debate with this. I've got people in our green room that have, um, you know, a great hatred for me. I can, I know all those people. Uh, I can see them shaking their, I'm kidding, of course, being totally sarcastic. But anyways, here comes. Um, medium. Ether, in the way I'm talking about it, and if you get 100 professors from university and they talk about ether, they're going to talk about it as a medium. We're not talking about shift the name, shift the lame, and come up with poetic new names for it. We're talking about, it's a medium. That's the idea of ether. It's simple. Light is a wave through something. Now you can give it all the kinds of properties you want, but in the end, it's a medium. Liquid is a medium, it's, but it's held together and it's held together by atomic polarity. This is 
the crux. This is how I got to the argument. Solids. Solids are held together by atomic bond, bonds. Bombs. Although, you know, that's what we call a garden path sentence in linguistics. You say it so many times that, you know, atomic bomb, and you see BO, that your brain just spits that out automatically. You know, it's atomic bonds. That is a solid, you know, the atoms are tightly uh, connected, and liquids are done so more loosely, but also they also use gravity. Uh, liquid also, I didn't put that as well. Gas is held together by gravity or some container. Same way with liquid can be that way as well. But even in space, though, if you notice, if you put water in space, it makes a sphere. So I, that's the reason I did that. So held together by atomic polarity, basically the what people call charge. Um, some models can explain that, um, numerous models. But anyways, this is a medium. So light are waves through medium. Um, waves in the ocean that you surf on are waves through a medium. It's a liquid. Um, sound that goes through, if you tap on the end, end of a solid iron beam, you can, you can hear the, the, the waves will go through that beam. If you are in the gas, in a gas that is you're standing on the earth and you have um, the atmosphere, you can make waves by vibration and that vibration hits things just like that one diagram i so showed you and waves are transmitted if you go into space and you try to talk and listen there is no sound because there is no medium so for light to travel through empty space yes there are places in space that are empty and it's all filled with stuff i know gosh i just hear people yelling at this so this is it so is the next slide it it may be it my objection. Yep, it is. Here we go. Ether as a medium in space. The fatal flaw is there is no force in space to hold together ether particles to make a medium. Therefore, it is not a medium in space and waves can't propagate through it. There's no gravity holding ether against a body in space. There's no atomic structure or attributes to hold ether together. Particles in space, when they get moving, we know by Newton's law, they'll move and move in that direction forever. The reason we have waves in a medium is because there is a force that keeps those particles together. Otherwise, if you go to the edge of the atmosphere, you don't have the oxygen, uh, all that atmosphere necessarily staying there. Some escapes to space. So... That's what I was thinking about, and I finally got to it. And it's, it's interesting because um, I, I subscribe to Borkert's work, which is motion, all masses in motion, and there's no mo mass without motion. There's no motion without mass. Um, and that when a particle in space um, that does not have any kind of force or container, yes, if ether got close to it, but even, got, even if ether gets closer to a body, What's keeping it? Well, people say, well, other ether, well, if it bounces off, it's going to eventually just be like gravitons. It's going to go in random directions and random ways. Why is it going to only hit its own particles? And what does that mean? So that's a problem. And of course, you have the whole problem of if ether is in space, is there a frame? Why would, what's it staying if it were to somehow have a magical force that kept it together? How come you have, um, uh, you know, the earth going through it or that the medium is there so it can go through it? Because if the particle of ether, what, it's got a slower speed, why is that? Again, it should not stay in one place. Ether is stationary as compared to what? So my contention is ether, any particles in space, as what we talked about ether, what people in their minds were not realizing when they thought about it was that all the me these waves that we know through a medium are with particles that have some force that keeps them together so waves can pro propagate through them. Otherwise, you have a gravitonic field, what we, my father and I call gravitonic field, or gravitons, which is random particles in random directions. And yeah, they'll hit each other once in a while, but they're certainly not a medium unless... I don't even know. I, I don't know how you can do that. So that's my objection. That's what I just came up with probably a couple of weeks ago. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, 
what is keeping them together? I said, what is the difference? So what we have in our head is we know of the way medium mediums can can propagate uh, through. Uh, I mean, waves can propagate through medium. We know then when if we never haven't thought about is mediums require the particles to have force that keeps them together, and if that is exists, then you can have a medium. I say in space, you just can't do it. So there is no ether because there is no container. That's what, that's what, um, yes, that's what I'm saying. Yep. Because if you put stuff randomly in space, it's going to go randomly around. You're not going to have an ether. It's not going to stay around to, to transmit. This one particle isn't going to stay there as in this one graph. Um, let me go back to it. It's not going to be doing this. The ether particle in the middle of space isn't going to be doing this. It's not going to be happening in my opinion. That's my, that's what I came to as a conclusion, trying to come up with some type of, um, is there a fatal flaw in this? So that, that, that's what I came up with. So that's, that's the fatal flaw that I see. It's really weird. I mean, it's pretty new. I've never seen that argument before that ether can't be a medium in space and particles can't be a medium without some type of um, force between them. Okay, so conclusions before I get into people uh, talking about that, um, talking about this, and I'm sure wailing on me. And again, this is just my opinion. Um, but I, this is another thing that I will say. The best minds on the planet for the last 300 plus years have tried to solve light and gravity with ether medium and no one has proposed a satisfactory mo satisfactory model that addresses all the pos positive objections and that would allow everyone to embrace ether as a viable model that's true this is a true statement and i think people if there was something that was really there that some tweak would give us then it would have would have happened that's my opinion because you know I, haven't, I don't see it. And with this objection, this idea that you can have a medium in free space where there's no, nothing that keeps things together and that we're traveling through this, it'd be like traveling through this pudding or something, you know, these old kinds of things. Like, and what is, what's, what's, what are, what is ether staying put to? How, how is it not, tr what is it? I, I can't even answer that question. I want somebody to answer the question, how ether stays in a place. How does it do that? So, you know, one or more tweaks on the ether model will not magically save a fatal flawed, fatally flawed theory that cannot be a medium in space. That's what I'm saying. Particles in space cannot be a medium unless you imbue them with magical properties. Or you say that those particles have these, these attractions and this is the physical reason. Not because I put like positive and negative on it because those are arbitrary attributes with arbitrary properties. But that's my article. That's my argument. So anyways, um, I'm sure, I'm sure that, um, you know, people, if you want to talk with me live, um, I will absolutely make, make your argument. Uh, I will come back at you if you tell me how ether is so great and not uh, I'll talk about the objection. The idea would be to, to talk about the objection or aid objections um, or to again imbue or shift it and say dave ether isn't this no ether is this this is what i'm talking about so if you're talking about something else that's great and call it something else it's not ether um call it your uh the hue particle like frank and hue or call it the um garneth particle or the hilster particle or the keen particle or the cricket particle or the cohen particle don't call it ether. Ether is a is the idea is the idea is light is a, me, a wave through a medium, and I say in space can't happen. It's not a medium. So, anyways, um, <laughs> no one wants to talk to me. I'm sure it's like <laughs> I, I'm I'm honest. I, I I just thought of this recently, and it's intriguing to me. And I will tell you right now, everyone to the camera, I'm not saying that I'm buying this yet. Uh, or I am. I think it's pretty interesting. So um, let's see. I did on a presentation in David's video. Okay. Anyways, 
Um, we have people here. Uh, James Keene is smoking because he just like, I'm not coming on talking with Dave today. Um, uh, Franklin Hughes, who's an etherist, um, uh, is there. And um, um, and we also have Ian Cohen. I have a uh, Taiwan Cricket is here as well. If you do want to speak to me, we do have, if in the blue room, uh, you can go to live.naturalphilosophy.org and um, you can get on the air. And I'm absolutely willing to let you talk, talk away. I will come back at you with a response, but I will, I will let you freely talk about something. Uh, okay. Um, anyways, um, let's see what was it. So there is a private comment because I know I don't see Taiwan cricket. I know you don't have something there. Oh, there gravity is what you're looking for. Okay. So anyways, would somebody like to come on? Hey, Ian, I know you're, you're up for it. Um, how are you, Ian? It's good to see you after so many weeks. You know, my dad's been yeah. not doing so good. So, you know. Uh, I, I heard about that from Dennis Allen, and um, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that, but I hope he's recovering. And unfortunately, I, I was just otherwise occupied. I had to go down the country on some tours. Um, that's why I couldn't make. Um, well, it's great to have you back. I'm always, I always enjoyed talking with you. You're a big thinker and very open minded. So, um, have you, you know, this whole idea that you know e, you know first of all are you a person that said yeah ether should be and we should describe ether as a wave through a medium is that something you subscribe to well the short answer is probably yes but but my first comment was going to be that i, I sort of um might refuse <laughs> a quarrel uh, you know between etherists and non-etherists uh, per se um so I, I made a few notes here, David. Um, obviously, I, I totally agree that that one must be open, totally open. And um, though, if I may gently suggest, you know, I, I think there might be some possibility of interpreting some of the um, journey that, that you've undertaken as, as, you know, what many of us have done. I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm not immune to it either uh, forming a view uh, ab initio as as to whether this is acceptable to you almost emotionally or philosophically and then sort of right. finding arguments to justify that right right so you just sorry you might want to come back on that now sure but you see my my fundamental point here is about all these models um i, I you know i, I I'm not sure if I, if I use this. I, I, I'm actually skeptical of all models, you know, the atomic models and this mo these models and those models. W what I do is um, if I have a complex um, phenomenon in nature that I want to describe, um, in other words, I can perform a few experiments with it, but I, I cannot perform an infinity of experiments, you know, vary all the parameters and so on. Well, what I do is I make a mathematical model I find how the system behaves experimentally and I extrapolate that to, you know, partial differential equations or something. And I make a mathematical model and then I, I plug in certain variables and I see what the out, out, outputs are. To me, that's what a model is. I, I don't I don't view the the um, ether as a model per se. And um, I, I view it and this might be a little controversial, but I view it as, as basically like a gas or like air. I mean, you might say you you, um, you measure uh, the atmospheric properties and you find that it has certain uh, density and, and, and certain pressure under certain temperature conditions. So you have a model that, that, that there's oxygen there or that there's air there. And then if you have another container with hydrogen, you, you find different properties and you have a model for that. Well, you know, I, I don't even formulate a model for this at all because I'm skeptical of all models. I say... There are properties which are inherent. We we do measurements. We perform electromagnetic measurements, and we form. We we, we find that there's a sort of a a, a capacitive value and an inductive value. You know, you you have the um, permittivity and the permeability uh, of the medium, and you have a a wave resistance. You have a wave impedance, if you like, uh, to alternate alternating current. And um, you, you have a speed, you know, a sort of a Newtonian type speed, just as like you, you have, say, the pressure divided by the density of a gas. You take the square root of that or you can bring in the adiabatic constant to make it more accurate. Yes. And here, here you have the same thing. You have a square root value with with epsilon naught and, and, and mu naught. So um, uh, 
So, so just to get back to this controversial statement I'm making, which I'm sure you'll want to come back on, is the the the, the half dozen models that that you applaud very much are all models. I, I sort of dismissed them. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, no, that's really interesting. You know what's interesting to me isn't that. I would argue against that is that I didn't really even think of that. Basically what you're arguing is that the only important thing to you is the empirical equations we come up where we can do things with and make predictions with. And we, we do that all the time, right? We actually have in human history made electronics, made all kinds of things without any type of idea of what's really physically going on, right? We don't know. We talk about, for instance, electricity. And it's ridiculous because you'll hear things, physicists talking about electricities, and all of a sudden they'll talk about, and the holes left behind as these travel, travel in this direction. And you think about it as a physical, you just think that's bonkers, right? It just doesn't make any sense. But if you then look at all the equations, the empirical equations that my father, for instance, used very brilliantly through his life as a person who was in electrical engineering and research and coming up with new digital equipment. They didn't need to know what was going on. It's, it, I, you know, and I think I would say to you is that it's not important to you. Um, the same way that to me, I can't stand the idea as a mathematician, because I got my degree in math, I can't stand not knowing me what really is, what is it really? You know, we know, for instance, we do know some things, for instance, right, atomic structure, we can now see and, and, and really understand the way atomic structure works. Yes, you know, it's not, it is sort of a model, I, I guess my comeback to you would be, that's, that's kind of got a lot of evidence as to at least locations of stuff. It doesn't say what how it really works. But I mean, you don't call that a model, the atomic, what do you would, what would you call the atomic the the uh, the 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 table uh, of elements. What would you call that? Okay. That's not math. That's not mathematics. Yeah, as this, but it's distinct from say the Bohr model or or some. Mo model. No, yeah, no. What I'm just yeah. saying is just we. I, I think you and I would be in agreement that copper exists, that silver exists, that argon exists, right? I mean, do you agree with that, or or you don't? Well, I, I, obviously, I, I, I do agree, and and we we can catalog these um, in, in terms of properties. I, I mean, it's it's a microscopic way of of categorizing things. I, just as we categorize uh, wood and 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 uh, iron as, as as having different uh, strengths and, and so on. Uh, um, so so yeah, yes, that's what the periodic table is. It, it's all these um, elements uh, categorized in, in regard to their properties but is that a mo that's not a model then no to start you know I, I when the chemists start waxing lyrical about all these shells and this one is that and the the halogens have this in common and and there's some blanks here and so on I, I just say oh let them away with that if that gives them their results fine but I, I don't take it very seriously to be quite honest but but here, here here's oh no no I understand here's another uh, interesting all right this is very interesting I'm loving this uh, this uh, discussion here um but what here here's what here's what I would say too Here's a, uh, not a counter argument, but an interesting part of this conversation between me, I want to know everything physically and you, you don't care. Give me the math. I'm happy and we can do all, all we need with it. If we have a model and that model, for instance, like we have for uh, uh, our model for part the particle model, we call it. Right. And we apply that to electronic circuits. And now we can understand my dad can explain why in a transition, a, tra a transistor is doing that, and what forces and what's going on there. And then that allows us to predict a measurement that no electrical engineers never saw because they weren't looking for it. And it was very small, but we now have that. Isn't that somewhat at least saying, okay, here's a model. We've applied it to electronic components. We are now making predictions. Another prediction we're making, I'm not gonna tell about, because it's really amazing. It's about um, magnetic fields around a wire. Very simple. And any, any student in any, any elementary school can do an experiment to show something new. The only reason we have that is we came up with a model, a physical model, and we thought about it that way. 
doesn't that seem to be worth something? Because even in the end, if we get the physical model for the magnetic field that's much better and more precise, or that we have me measurements where we know that there are these relationships, that when you have that current uh, between uh, in parallel resistors isn't the same as everybody says it is, that there is a really a small difference, and this is the reason why. If there's that model and it then makes these predictions, and then you can make empirical equations for it, doesn't that make it a valid um, idea that models could then be really useful? Well, well, they're certainly useful. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But whether they represent ultimate truth. Well, yeah, they don't represent. They, I would say they represent less, more truth than the one before, right? I mean, that's what I would say. If your model makes a prediction about a, a, of something that wasn't measured before or looked at and in fact is there and that regular explanations with the regular physical model of electronic circuits can't do, then, yeah, I mean, then you've got a, a model that's, you know, it's just not just doing things. It's not it's like, oh, they, who, you don't know what's going on. There, there is some idea of what's going on. If we then have a model of what's going on in the subatomic world that says these are the things moving and then we can make empirical calculations, we can go way beyond what we're doing now technically. Isn't that, isn't that something or? It's a better predictor, but I, I wouldn't confuse, uh, you know, e e even the success uh, in prediction with ultimate reality you know th these are philosophical questions and I, I don't think we can get to the bottom of them uh, you know when, where we distinguish between mind and matter and what ultimately these mm -hmm. um, concepts entail uh, and therefore i have my skepticism about all physical models um, sure sure you know, science. oh i do too yeah i do too i i understand that point of view i really do i think it's a valid point of view and but I, I also think that models will help us get to those things. And I mean, here, here's the way if you look at the way I look at the world, I think it's, you know, there's infinity up and down. The idea that one particle could magically just 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 start holding hands and dancing and create the universe. That's pretty, pretty hard to believe. I believe that, you know, the infinite stuff below it affects the, the stuff that makes these things happen now. But if you try to get it, let's just look at today's model, right? You say that solid, I can put, I can't put my finger through the hand. Well, why is that? Well, most, this is mostly space. The atoms are mostly space. What's really happening? Well, atoms supposedly are made of subatomic particles. <coughs> so even protons are made, not, you know, not solid. So you keep going if you look, if you believe in, 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 in Borkert's infinity, you'll never get to anywhere, right? You'll never find that solid. And in that sense, I agree with you. It's you're looking at wispiness, right? What is it really? So I, I understand that's, that's, that's really, that's, that's really a uh, interesting point of view. And I, I totally can accept that. I mean, so, so per perhaps I, I, I was right in my initial statement that, you know, even though on the face of it, we appear to take opposite sides uh, there isn't a major difference between us uh, yeah no no i just think i think what happens is <laughs> people have an inherent way they want to look at the world somewhat my father and i are very physical that's the way we seem to we that makes our makes sort of wired in our brain other people it's more just the systems right the you know what's going on what can you do what can you predict can we take something and, and manipulate the world, the physical, what we call physicality and not who cares. We're never going to get at it. Yeah, that's absolutely true. We're not going to. All we can sort of do is in our local world, make equations for the things to do in this local area and hope that that's going to be a useful thing. And as we, you know, have more predictions or come up with a, what we call less wrong models than the ones before, instead of four elements, there's now 103. Yeah, we don't really know what they really, really are, but you know, we get further and further down. So yeah, I, I yeah, we're, I just think it's just different, different wiring. And I, I don't, I think it's, inter I, I don't know what the answer is that a physical model like my father and I have come up with, even though it could be very explanatory, at least in the, the near levels that we have, is that really what's going on or is that just forces that uh, eventually that 
yeah, it will help things and it makes us be able to make our equations better. Um, we, you know, we can explain, for instance, diffraction and, and dispersion, you know, rainbows and, you know, the pinhole camera uh, and the wave particle duality. We can finally explain that in some kind of model. But, you know, in the end, is it really that? <laughs> yeah. OK. Well, I, I, I yeah, I, I, do, I do believe we're I just think, you know, people are wired differently and. And uh, yeah, I think maybe we're, we're almost place. coming to a sort of duality. Just we talked about the wave particle duality, a duality between a sort of a medium and a particle. And, and we're sort of like um, considering one on, on Mondays, uh, Wednesdays and, and uh, Fridays and the others, uh, the other days, as I think Sir Lawrence Bragg said about the wave particle. Yeah, yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Well, those that's very interesting comments. Thank you so much. Um well, thank any, you. anything else? Any anything well, in your, well, else maybe in your just notes? Before I, leave you, I, I just yeah. made maybe two or three Absolutely. Other points. Please, please. Just quickly. Um maybe there are only two. Uh just when you're talking about the laser, well, that was an interesting point you put forward. But I mean, I just view that as as um uh radiation within within a medium, which is co happens to be coherent. All the elements are actually in step. So, you know, I, I'm not sure if I saw a major problem there. Uh, the other one uh, was sort of fundamental in, in your thinking uh, about force holding particles together and so on. And again, I, I would just um, pray that one considers that, that one doesn't have the ultimate truth in these matters any more than one has with regard to a field, you know, maybe an electrostatic field or something, what holds all that together. So, so those are just my, 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 my quick reactions to the other points you raised. But thank yeah. you very much for... Um, it was most interesting. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed uh, your point of view. Thank you so much, as, as I always do. So thank you. All right. Um, we got other people here in the green room. Anybody? Oh, there's Franklin. Hey, Franklin, how are you? Really good to see you. Nice to be back on air and see everybody again after a few weeks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's get back. I mean, that's an interesting objection I think you have there. So uh, I've not really heard of that uh, myself, but I want to make sure, like you said, that I, that I understand what the nature of the objection is. Right, so absolutely. It, it would seem that uh, your hypothesis, well, the hypothesis of ether, which is just made out of particles, right? those particles have to be close enough uh, in order to have a compression and a rarefication. Well, more, not, not yeah, that's close. It's not close enough, but stay pretty much in a, in any in a place. Right. I mean, because yeah. you, you, otherwise, otherwise, I, I, I claim that a particle in space will, will travel in that direction forever unless it hits something else. So there's no magical thing that says we got to hit each other. I mean, uh, gra graviton is a good one. So, yeah, that, that's the idea. I, I think you had mentioned that. Go ahead. So, yeah. So, but the basis, I mean, I found, I found that kind of unusual. I have had a little bit hard time wrapping my head around that. But uh, the, the basis of the objection is that if, if that were true, then there's nothing keeping these particles together, so they should just all evaporate. They should just well, no, they just go in different. You can't have a waves through them, right? You can't have that because you for for waves to happen in a medium, the medium has to be stable. That the particles themselves of the medium cannot be traveling in just forever directions. They have to be in a a local place and stay in that local place. And if you look at again gas or solids or even you know even the atmosphere. What's key, you know, if you go out in space, in the edge of space, those particles aren't staying there. They're not coming back down. The only thing that keeps them in the ground is another force called gravity. So that's that. And then what I was saying is once the ether is out in space, there is no magical force to keep it contained, which you need it to be contained in order to transmit waves through it. So that that I, I agree. I've never heard of that. It was in a, only a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, I, that's the idea. You would say idea. that, you know, air qualifies the medium for sound because it's, uh, say, gravitationally. Attracted. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It's between the Earth uh, and, and <clears throat> gravity. And it's but once you get beyond uh, the, the Earth then it, it uh, I mean, do, do you believe that the, you say the universe is infinite so that there's this yeah, I do. space yeah, for I do. everything to just. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe there's. Land, out yeah. into. So, so your prediction, you're saying that there cannot be an ether because if there are any such particles, they would have all escaped. Well, uh, they don't escape. They would just be traveling in random directions. So you couldn't, they're not going to be staying around and hitting and transmitting this wave in this line towards some, you know, some object or in some direction, um, you know, because because they're not going to disappear, though they turn into what 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 would be well, called a gravitic sure I field. That part of it. I mean, because it's like air is 
you know, the particles in the air are moving at something like, I don't know, like 900 miles per hour at 70 degrees. And uh, so they're, they're, they're not staying still like. No, that. they're not staying still, yeah. but they stay there because they have to keep transmitting waves. That's the way it works. If these things are just flying off and not hitting it, the reason they hit each other is they're because they're contained. Gravity keeps them there. They hit each other and they stay around because they, they, they don't you don't have a, an oxygen, uh, you know, an oxygen mo molecule or element of or whatever, uh, you know, whatever molecules in the air hit something and then like in space, just then just keep going somewhere after that. This, it stays around because gravity's pushing it down, friction's pushing it down. There's all kinds of things going on. Whereas in space, you don't have that. So that, that's the idea, yeah. Well, I'm not quite sure. Once, once again, it's like, that would kind of be the difference between a liquid and a gas. So if you're looking about a liquid and you've got a wave, then clearly the particle is probably just doing this. But yep. if you're talking about gas, well, particles probably doing this. If you throw, okay, go out to space, throw one cubic meter of, of gas into space, and then try to talk through it and get waves through it. It doesn't happen. It disperses. Yes. Although I did see this very interesting um, YouTube, and it said that uh, even in space, there's sound. It's, it's it No, 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 there isn't. Frequency. There isn't. But there no, there no. is that that they've measured it is that there's actually enough atmosphere in even deep space to support a sound wave. So I was just kind of wondering whether everything I read, I, I did read that before this talk and I, I could, you know, all, all I got was there's no sound in space. So, well, but again, I guess the idea, the idea would be one of the things you did say that I thought was very interesting in the comments that you made was that, well, if you have an ether that has some types of properties that keep it closer together, then you have a medium, right? Yeah. It's like if you had like a, a cube of uh, iron, right? No. Does that cube have any container? I, I, I don't understand the question. If you have a one cubic yard of iron, does that have any container? Of uh, yes, it does. It has the atomic bonds that keep it together. Okay, so and that and that would be, uh, I guess, you would call it Coulomb's law. I mean, it depends on the model you have. Our our model, my dad and I's model, uh, would call that the Dunu effect, um, basically. But yeah, they will. Um, they stay together. And again, it depends on your model. In our model, it's F2 gravity that keeps it together, but you know, that's our model. It depends on the model. Yeah. So, but we're talking about whether this is, uh, uh, say, a fatal flaw against the, the ether. If you right? can't keep particles together in space, you're not going to have a medium. It's, that's not, I don't think that's really, in some sense, arguable. You can't have, for instance, gravitons, which are, are basically particles that move in all random directions. It's not an e you, you they're, if they're going at the speed of light, you're not going um, you're not going to have waves through them because the waves are going at the speed of light and the particles are going at the speed of light. What are you going to do? So um, that that's that's one thing. Um, so that's what I'm saying. It's if you can't ether cannot be uh, a medium for light because it can't be a me it, it, it will not be a medium in space unless you imbue magical powers to it. That's that well, there was are my some etherists thing. to support me. I, me personally, I don't think ether is a solid, but um, there there are some people who think that, right? So oh, you know, there's there are people who think that there's a lattice. Who is a, a lattice person? And again, I'm not going to argue against that. That's the, that's the, a, it's the a little, Ola, uh, I guess Ron the Ron Hatch. That, Ron Hatch that, was, was a lattice person. That, uh, but I mean, if you if you consider that though, yeah, no, no, but that, that to me is not an ether. That's a lattice. That's a lattice model. And that's not an ether model. The idea, the, the whole idea well, in, 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 no. Let's get, well, get back to your definition, which is the ether is something which is compressible. Although it's, you know, you showed it more like a random kind of, more of a gaseous kind of thing. So, I mean, the I whole idea, from what I would say, the, if you get a, if you get into the renaming things. Uh, yeah, we're going to get into that. You, rename, shift the blame. That's what's going to happen. So this is like Alistair Riddick, who's saying here, well, we're, sp we're talking a specific conceptualization of ether. The whole idea of light is a wave through a medium. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what we use ether for. If it's something else, let's call it something else. It's a lattice. It's a, I don't know, 
uh, a part the zombo particle that has properties that keeps it together it's no longer you know what we call ether yeah so that's an important distinction so what you are showing in yours is more like a particulate gaseous uh it's a me no no it's not I gaseous it's a medium through which uh, yeah ether the light that's waves, right yeah. we have lights and uh it's 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 light transmission through a compression rarefication process. Right. Yes. Right? Yes. But that, I'm trying to use what we I would consider if you got a thousand physicists together, that's what they would consider to be the word E A T H E R or E T H E R. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. We have to understand that. Yes. If you have a different model, it's a different model. We would have to call it something else. An ether, a person in science would say, that's a nice model, but it's not an ether model. So give it a name. So you would not consider, I mean, I kind of curious, find that curious that you wouldn't consider it a lattice. Oh, no. Lattice is a lattice. That's why we call it a lattice. It's a lattice. In fact, if you ask um, uh, Bruce Nappy, he proposed a lattice model. If you ask, is that an ether? He's going to say, he'll laugh at you and say, no, it's a lattice model. Uh, you know, it's like calling my dad and I's, uh, my dad's model for light a lattice, uh, lattice model or an ether model. It's not. It's just not. I mean, you know, it's a different model. That's why we call it the particle model. I don't know. We'll call it the Hilster model. And when it dies and no one cares about it and, and it never is adopted, then it dies with its, its the, the whatever name it is, right? Well, let's get back to, let's suppose we'll, we'll, we'll go back to taking the original picture there and uh, possible reasons why that could still exist even in the vastness of space, right? Right. So suppose the ether particles were made out of uh, ordinary matter. How would that change things? I don't think, it, you know, what's ordinary matter? I mean, I, we're getting ordinary to the question. Matter, has one property which it is gravitationally attractive okay yeah if it, this this can't happen in, in space this can't happen and uh, why is that because there's there's no reason once a particle it's another particle it goes off into a direction infinitely without end until it hits another until particle, it hits another one which then it goes another direction right but it's not going to trans. If you have random particles and going in random directions, you're not going to get a wave that's going to propagate through that in, the, in this form. Because we know that we have waves of light coming from a star and we can see it and it's coming from that direction. It's but, not but random I, but, because uh, otherwise what you'd have would I, be I, light did, in all directions minute, and it would be right. It demonstrate that air is just such a medium where the particles sure. are going everywhere. Well, no, no, they're not. If you watch, if you watch them, they will move around in a Brownian motion, but they're not going to go four miles from you. Uh, no, it's, it's in a local area. In the next particle next to them. So, like, yeah, but I mean, in general, that particle will be, and particles near it will be making these waves go, and it's not going to be moving it. Yes, and we also know that in in air, when wind is blowing, that it affects sound waves greatly, right? That if you have a wind blowing that and you shout against the wind, people aren't going to hear it on as, as far on the other side. So yeah, I mean, yeah, if they're moving and they're flowing, but again, those these flows are caused by um, what we call um, uh, polarity. That is polarity between atoms, right, or molecules. That when they get close to it, there is attraction there. That's beyond gravitational. That is polarity. If you believe in Yonel Denu, then that would be magnetic or the Coulomb's law, whatever you want to call it. And but that keeps it in a general local area. Yes, it's I mean, not it's going possible. to stay. I mean, uh, I mean we, we just got the question about why we're talking about specific ether theories, and I think to a certain extent you you have to. Uh, because otherwise you don't know what you're talking about. Right? Exactly, exactly. You have to you have to understand what a person's talking about. And you have to understand what Dave D. Hilser is talking about. And yeah. what I'm trying to do is if I take a thousand scientists and say, what what would be luminous or, you know, ether and light being a medium through it, they would look at this this diagram that I have here and say, yep, that's it. So I'm trying to use the standard definition of ether. I'm not coming up with some fancy particle that has new properties that do other, new things. I don't have that. So yeah, I, I'm, I am saying I'm trying to take standard ether and make a 
come up i've been trying for decades to come up can i come up with something because i don't think ether is a good model myself it doesn't mean it's right i'm just my opinion that it would could i come up with something that i would consider to be almost fatal so yeah well as as a, a etherist i'm trying sure. to see whether no, i no, can sure. determine whether that really is a fatal thing now the the what i would have to do in order to uh to do that would be to give you some reasoning or logic to suggest that uh, either, well, probably the easiest one would be to suggest that there is some inherent attractive force for these ether particles so that they don't actually. No, I mean, that would be a logical, I, that's uh, the logical conclusion. I would agree with you. I mean, you're, you're spot on on that, on Franklin. If you want to stick to an ether being a medium where you have light and waves, you're going to have to come up with some kind of mechanism where these things don't go flying off forever in yeah. directions and you end up with just a gravitic field. Okay, Basically, so I have a would... quiz for you, David. So it's a simple quiz. And the, uh, do you remember what my model of the ether is? You have a proton and electron together that forms an ether, ether particle, I believe. Okay, very good. So See? let's say, so, so uh, we have, uh, it's fundamentally made of electrons and positrons, which are positrons, yeah. particles, right? Fine, fine. Mm -hmm. Right, so. With so the I magical have... properties of charge. Yes, I got it. The magical properties of charge. But, you know, assuming we have these things, right, then, then what would happen if you brought uh, another one of these things uh, next to it. Now they're charged objects. So what do you think they would do? Would they repel each other? Well, the question is, is why do? are they traveling and why are they coming together? Um, if they are, you know, you have to figure out in space, what are they doing? Space, they're not sitting in space. They're not sitting around next to each other, jawing and having conversations. They're going to be going in a direction for some reason, well, launched for them, some reason. Let's just take all every particle in the universe away. And we just put these two things next to each other. And uh, what do you think is going to happen? Well, that to me is not a realistic. Like, um, yeah, will, I don't know. It, will, will they stay exactly in the same positions that they are? No, I believe if you have nothing else in this fictitious universe that they would, um, there would be no forces to key, keep them even together. And that whole thing would just poof away. You think they just I, poof away? No, 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 not move. I don't think you can have, I don't believe in experiments where you can get rid of everything in the universe. I'm Borkian that everything and everything well, has to be a, held, held, a held together by, no, I know, but yeah, I can't, but I, I, I think they're ill. I don't think they're legitimate experiments. Particles here. I don't think that they're a and, legitimate uh, experiment to have only two particles in the universe. Okay. There are a million particles in the universe, but we just happen to have these two are right here. Right. Now, what do you see here? Now the, the red is attracted to the black. So I would say uh, if you have an explanation for charge, then I would believe that. Right now, it's a magical force. It is, but we know what it does. Well, you we know what you say it does. Right, right. how something works in order to predict what it will do. Sure, I understand so, that. I understand we that. We have the red and Oops. we have the black block there. What force will develop between the two? I don't know. Again, I don't know what to, uh, it's you're, you can tell me what you would say. I would say until you give me a reason what those what forces force are, I can't agree. The, the, the positive and the negative charge. Uh, uh, none. I don't believe in charge. There's the Coulomb force. OK, what so you're going to call it. it OK, not, now you're saying Coulomb, force. Coulomb okay. force. OK, now you're saying Coulomb force. OK, now I'm there's listening. The Coulomb force. So what does the Coulomb force say the black block is going to do to the red block? We come together. Coulomb. They will come together. Excellency, that's all I wanted you to say. Is okay. that if you have two of these kind of particles, mm -hmm. that there is going to be a tendency for them to actually attract each other. They could attach this way. They could attach this way. They could attach. Understood. This way. Understood. So I'm just trying to motivate for you. Because, I guess you know, my I question have not is thought about this particular objection, but you are correct in that there has to be some kind of attractive force between the uh, ether particles to keep them close enough so that they just don't fly away, right? right? right. So 
that that would kind of be um yeah no i i think that's a legitimate possible uh, try, way of uh, that working right it's just for, first of all I, I want to congratulate you on two things one you're listening to the objection and understanding it two you're going to try to make a solution to it instead of telling me how ether works and how this doesn't matter that's that's yeah, I mean, not normal. I mean, yeah, I know, but that's not normal from what most etherists would say. I mean, are you are you are you totally uh, fine with the idea that ether could could not be the model for what we think light is? Um, it could be. There, there. I mean, there's. Uh, I mean, we have. You know, it's well. It's either it's something in a medium or it's an individual particle flying from point A to point B. Right. That's I think. Or it's a lattice. Uh, well, I would still consider a lattice a uh, a compression rarefication. Uh, kind sure, of thing. I understood. Yeah, you can if you want to talk for, about it for, that for, way. For yeah, being say a particle that has to physically travel from point A to point B, right? I mean, this is the the thing about say the 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 whole thing about whether light is a a, a particle or a wave because it genuinely appears to travel like a bullet, right? So you like you say your laser thing. It's 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 not like a speaker where, you know, it spreads through the whole room. It's it's more like a gun where you where you shoot it from one side of the room and it goes and hits the other side of the wall like a bullet. So the, that's very particle like, right? Now now so the thing is as, as an etherist, yes, I have to explain that, right? Although as an etherist, I don't have any, you know quote unquote proof, right? All I can do- Well, nobody, is, nobody has proof for that. All I can so. do is motivate, uh, you know, the nature of light and the nature uh, uh, of light generation itself is that, you know, there's some electrons bouncing around somewhere. And at some point it drops from one level to another level. And that releases what we call a photon, right? And uh, the thing about these photons is that uh, they they are a wave you know i think i had a, a talk about this where i discussed that uh light travels like like a pencil that if you were to look at what uh, the the way the shape of the uh actual light wave is that you would see that it has a finite length it has a finite width and it travels as a packet. It's a wave packet. I think in, in, in physics, they call it maybe a soliton. Perhaps it's as much, it's like you took a rope and you just jerked it once. It's just like one. So you're now discussing type. your right. ether model, right? Yeah, well, I'm trying to motivate why is it that, the, you know, the, the, the light say, the, well, this is your abduction, you know, how does the laser travel thing? Right. Which, right. Is, that, which is that uh, the thing is that if, uh, if the ether is this, you know, jam-packed, you know, bunch of positive and negative charges like that, I would say that that acts a lot like a Newton's cradle, where you put the energy through one side, it goes through the the other the other particles, and then just immediately shoots the other one out. That uh, you see that that is a wave but it's traveling exactly like a particle and that it's going in a straight line it's not dispersing i'm curious do you can you describe my father's um model for light well it isn't isn't your your model that the the um that you have particles being emitted in groups and that you get the the what we detect i say the wavefront as the impinging of the uh of those sets of particles is, is that is that yes correct? yeah that's very correct, correct. yes i think yeah. you know i've i've heard of that you know um other people um, i've never heard of anybody else if you can find them let me know because i've well, i've heard i've heard people hate, claim to say that they knew the that one person hate, said uh, rodin uh, rodin said something about that there's the guy um who has who who swears every other word um who's the uh that you i know interact with who uh um, yeah that guy he yeah no but it's a different model it's a different model no it's a different model he says it's the same it's not and and he said that only after we talked about what we had so no it's that's that's not true either but 
no. regardless i it's, it's most important that you understand that that what that kind of model is okay because to me i think the thing that came up that was so amazing about um, my father's model it's not mine of light was that it, it addressed one thing we all forgot about with light it's got a frequency in frequency requires more than one that's and that's all uh, his model is about frequency requires more than one thing you can't have a frequency occur with one thing coming you can't have oh the frequency of flights in this airport is this one airplane plane that that arrived on january 7th 1947 and there was never a plane you can't give a frequency to one thing you have to have more than one thing for a frequency and i think that's what was so um i would describe you know my father's salute his solution to what light is but i think first of all a discussion I, about you know what frequency is and it's like i frequency like is a, a something over time something over wall, time and the frequency at which you throw the rocks at the wall determine the frequency is what so uh well, although one of the consequences was, was that is that the uh, is that that means that the, the frequency you get uh it it it's it's a bang right it's it doesn't really have a, sh a shape, right? If, if you were to put it on a oscilloscope, it would look like, I don't know, like a square wave or, you know. But uh, so I did an experiment to try and determine, well, you know, is, is frequency like coming out of radio transmitter, is that really just pulses, right? And that the pulses are all the same. Uh, and that, uh, I mean, would you agree? I mean, if, if radio- Well, I mean, it, we're, we're writing a, my dad's writing a book on what we, we consider to be a physical, physical model for electronic circuits, light, gravity, the magnetism, the whole thing. So yeah, we have a pretty detailed description of what we think is going on. But again, it's just, just our model. So, okay, but, well, know, anyway. I just said, this is an interesting experiment that, that I did. So, you know, I made the, the prediction that if that were true, then if I have a radio transmitter, then I should be able to put in any input signal, square wave, sine wave, triangle wave, shouldn't matter because, uh, if, if the radio receiver is over there and only receiving the the hits from the the from the from the, the throwing of the rocks then it shouldn't matter it should be received exactly the same way uh, although it's although my experiments show that it's not that if i transmitted a, a triangle wave uh, or a sine wave or a square wave that those waves are actually received that way uh at the receiver so now, I know there's other ways of kind of finagling that so that that still works, but you just can't consider it uh, just like throwing rocks against the wall that every. Pulse. Well, in our model, that's not the way it works because you can have groups. The groups can be have more, more in a group. So you get basically sine waves. You can get any, almost any kind of wave. You can get any kind of wave with that there's model. So. Waves. Yeah. And we and, and I, I I've uh, my dad has actually described how he came to that kind of solution in his head. Um, I, I think part of it had to do with him working with the digital world of electronics, which sends things in in in, di in digital format, and yeah. that that kind of got him to get to that kind of model. Okay, well, well listen, case, I'm just kind of curious as, as whether I've been able to you know move your your your. your no, no. What uh, first of yeah. all, the whole thing the whole thing is a couple of things that I do agree that rarefication and and compression that you could sort of call you I, that I'm talking about. The difference would be a lattice model is doing that with fix, sort of fixed particles or fixed uh, a fixed mass, whereas uh, the ether uh, luminous or luminiferous ether does that where they're more free, like a gas uh, that I agree with. And I also congratulate you on understanding the objection and actually trying to come up in your model with a, a solution as to why you could have ether and 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 this would not be a problem. So um that's that's very very good congratulations hats off all right very good all right. that's all okay all thank you so much um there. whoops i gotta learn how to do all these things um we have james keen are you there you'd like to come on and make some comments or something yeah just to i, I do want to see here retro jeffs the problem with a material ether is does it have a location is it moving if not if so where with respect to what yeah, these are these are very good questions. I agree. Um, before I get to you, uh, James, uh, I just wanted to bring this up. So, Richard Jess, I agree with you. I, I have the same notion. Uh, if you do have ether, it, even as uh, Franklin would say, which is would be help sol solve this, that somehow it would 
sort of stay together you know it's staying together in reference to what is it all moving with us you know, are there other things it's a darn good question and i'm not saying i have any answers or objections or whatever to it but if you do have an ether you do have that whereas again if you have models that are just traveling particles that flow in directions yes they do collide but they don't really form some type of medium you don't have that uh how do you say local framework problem and i think ether will have that and it's it's inherent so i, I think that's a good observation um all right um yes james hey james how are you i'm fine hello um i i just have a brief question which which may be a little bit our suggestion sure. which may be a little bit off to topic although you did mention your father's experiments with the resistors right um and i watched those sessions um recently um in this forum my my suggestion or query is i would like to see uh, a statistical analysis of how your data or his data is different significantly different from the voltage divider model for example you, you, you in the standard model is you get certain volt you know like you've got two resistors in uh with the current going through and you you can uh measure between them and uh you, the voltage divider model what i didn't see in those presentations was what that model would predict and what the data is that you got and is it statistically different than what the standard model there of i guess uh, i guess i guess would be no I, very good question and i just want to get a quick clarif clarification from you when yes, you're sir. talking about model it's more of empirical equations that are used in in electronics exactly yes okay yes. okay because okay. what the difference is like for example if if i got 12 volts running through uh two 1k resistors in series and they're both exactly 1k uh i should get uh at the middle point between the resistors the voltage division of six volts so your father made the uh, different i think yes right and i think the only thing i can say and don't quote uh -huh. me on this because this question really needs to go to him because this is his expertise right. even in our model but Understood. from what i what i do know is that current is expected to be the same around the entire circuit and our model shows it's not it's very it's different not by much in fact we had to buy a voltmeter that went to seven digits 0. 0.000001 to be able to see it but there are some things that are considered to be um constant or the same in places in the circuit and they we turn out when we measure them they aren't and that's part of it that's all i can say that's and, and my okay. feeble understanding but what you should what you should do is send that question to my father uh and and uh he would be okay. happy to answer that yeah, so I, really I, good question I, you, 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 that would be uh supplemental to the data you already present right uh, or that he already presents uh you know so that the traditional guy like me that uses this voltage division equation right i get, get this answer but your data is that answer and there's yeah but the, i will say that the, that's what i like right. to see the two things no they're not significant normally yeah they're not significant normally right they're pretty small the differences. The other thing too is we can give a physicality, a physical reason for the transitional states of transistors, of resistors, of capacitors, of, and we can give a physical explanation for those. That's sort of our goal. And that is what would be a possible physical explanation instead of holes and elect electrons moving at meters a second and holes being moving in contrary direction so but no you're right and 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 again i would say that they're not um how do you say significant differences they're small differences but they could be significant as we get the smaller size, and we don't the know the absolute size of the difference is is not the key question <clears throat> is are they statistically significantly different like how many standard deviations right uh, right if, right if, 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 if my father's if your having model is predicting something different 
than the standard uh, voltage division equation. Yes. Uh, you have to demonstrate that to people like, you know. Right. Me. We have it in the book. Okay. We have it in the book and they're demonstrated and the numbers are there. So, yeah. Okay. So um, what, what, what will happen is you can talk with my dad and he will be much better to answer those questions than me. So. OK, thank you. But sir. Very good questions. Also. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, OK. And um, about Ether, did you have any comments about Ether and the idea of containment or not? Or was that just not something that was? Well, uh, some some of the listeners here may 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 know that I don't believe in continuous space or even continuous time. Okay. Okay. So uh, all of the discussion is based upon the assumption of what I call the mother theory is that space is continuous. And so, um, in other words, I'm in a different ballpark. Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, I I believe that space is not continuous. Gotcha. That, uh, it has a discrete structure, which sure. is a whole different avenue. And sure. so um, I I'm I'm neutral on the comments that were made gotcha. today because it's uh, no I understand the assumption of continuous space. Right, I understand. So I mean, it, it is I, I got you. So you have a different type of concept, concept and model for really what's going on and all of this. So it's not it's not something interesting to you. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't I'm not an etherist, so I'm not too worried about it. I was just trying to figure out why I didn't like that as a model. Was there something I could find that could finally squash it so I don't myself you know, think about it. But oh, that's totally I understood. In fact, I've got a book back here from a Canadian guy who talked about time and not being discreet. And he he got that he got that from um, not being discreet or yes, being discreet, not being discreet right here, not being being continuous, in other words. OK. Well, and the title I, I, suggests discontinuity. Yes. <coughs> So anyways, that's I, I'm lucky enough in that sense to have people who know that I, I love to look at different ideas that they'll send me their stuff. So um, I'm very privileged with that. I'm very happy to. Well, to thank you for today's them. presentation. I, I enjoy, enjoyed it a lot. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I know Taiwan Cricket is in our you can come on and talk or you can. Um, let's see if we can put some things out. How can we spend with magnitude holds the component? Um, let's see. I'm just trying to see if I can see some comments here. Oh, I got to get you down there. I'm sorry. Um, what, what are we doing on time here? Because it's uh, we got 15 minutes left. Um, uh, may differ between the velocity, acceleration, and so on. So time is similar to an angle swept out of a trajectory, not a dimension. Yeah, time is not a dimension. That that just doesn't make sense. We talked about time. Uh, who talked about time was. Uh, Nick Percival. If you haven't seen those folks, you should take a look at our his three lecture series we had here. Absolutely fascinating. If you loved the idea about thinking about time and stuff, go back and look at and watch those videos. Uh, Nick Percival on time just will get you really thinking. Oh, I do see uh, Taiwan Cricket is there. Um, did you want to come on? Wave to me there. Would you like to come on and make some comments and uh, whatever? Yes. Okay. Let's bring him on. Hello. Oops. I don't hear you. It seems like we got to get you. Do we hear uh, you now? Yes. Very good. Hello. How are you? I really appreciate you coming on. Um, you know, the floor is yours. You can say what you would like to say. Like sure I'm thing, I, made a com I made a private chat comment there. It says, uh, yeah, I can't uh, get those. Unfortunately, I, the only way I can get this, this stupid thing, it's one of the things I requested that StreamYard do. Can we please make it so we can put private, if people in the private chat want to have that displayed for everybody? I can do that if you want me to do it. What was your comment? Would you like would just, you like me to put that out for people to see? Or I'll just read it. I'm not sure if it's... Um, it, Is it gravity is what we're looking for? Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay, so, I, I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and, and post that in all, but you can read it still. I'll yeah, yeah it okay. So I just said gravity is what they're looking for, like talking about people who are talking about ether. So I, I think they shouldn't be looking for the ether. They should be looking for gravity, sort of. You know, we can't really explain that. So... Yeah, yeah, and, and I think it's interesting because I, I know a number of people, Nick Percival, for instance, who doesn't really think necessarily about ether or, or gravity. He's come to, when he's looking at frames of reference, 
it seems like one of the problems we have with frames of reference is this whole thing about ether, right? If you have this ether that kind of stays around, what's it staying around in reference to? It seems like the universe would be just more, you, things move and they go, they just go. And so the gravitational field seems to be more of that kind of nature. It's just, you know, it's, it's everywhere and particles moving everywhere and you don't have this problem of what's, you know, what is the, the, the um, how do you say, reference frame. Um, uh, people who have studied um, gravity, I mean, studied things that need like GPS or even time um, and looking at that and um, uh, relativity, Michael Moore and all the, Michael Moore, Michael and more, more, Michael and Mickelson and Moore. Michaels, whatever, uh, yeah. Eminem, yeah. they, they, and, and Ron Hatch, who's a GPS guy who, who passed on not too long ago, all those people had said to me, and I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but it's interesting. They have come to me and said, they think gravity is the basic, basic, uh, um, how do you say organizer of the universe. And if you look at my, my father and I's, um, model, magnetism all that stuff gravity is the basic organizer but random particles and random directions will cause shadows which bring things together cause them to orbit and all these things the universe is made up but that seems to be is that is that kind of what you're saying that gravity seems to be the fundamental force would, from or what yeah i would say so um i think uh, just from a philosophical point of view um if you're trying to analyze the universe and you come up with an idea, right? And it's not, it's not a physical thing you can touch, but a physical thing you can right. uh, study. Then you 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 have to ground that in something observable, right? So if we talk about an ether, we have to talk about something we can actually measure and, and um, we can actually uh, refer to in some sense, like gravity's. Gravity, I think, fits all the bills. Like you know, you can't see it or touch it or or, or anything, but you can see its effects. You know, you can you can mm -hmm. predict stuff based on based on that theory and the calculations with it. So I just thought, yeah, why not? Um, I uh, like a, I did some work with uh, Stephen Bryant. And, right, uh, right. Oh, yeah, of course. So, uh, yeah, he's a really great. So I kind of, I kind of subscribe to his his uh, theory on on um, relativity and all that. Right. And the other question I had was um, when uh, when the relativity people talk about time space, is that just another form of an ether? No, I mean, I'm for, no, according to them, they're going to say no, absolutely. And yeah, yeah. space time right. is replacing the idea that there would be ether or anything like mm -hmm. that. But, um, the, you know, the problem with the thing with space time, you've, I, there's things called foam, you know, some space time foam. There is um, different types of gravity that they have the I can't remember what it's called. It's just pretty crazy stuff. But they they pretty much say that um, there's a photon. The problem with the photon, they can't describe the wave part of it. They, that's when they get into the spookiness and the weirdness of quantum mechanics and all that, the double slit. And they get into things about even history erasing stuff that if you if you look at a photon and I look at a photon, it would go around the planet in a different direction. It's the consciousness. What they do is because they're stuck on a photonic model and they see the wave and particle aspects of it, they are stuck with this magical world, which they have no idea. And it sounds bizarre. And so they're now trying to reconcile you know, uh, gravity and light and the, the, you know, the, the forces in the atom with gravity, uh, general, which they call general relativity, they're pretty much lost as to if you really talk and sit them down about what light is, they're going to say it's a photon, you know, mm -hmm. but they're, but they have no explanation as the physicality of how a photon can yeah. be all the different color. You know, there's nothing like they're, they're no better off than Newton, who was saying in the beginning that photons that were blue were bigger than photons that were red. I mean, basically that. So, yeah, is I it, mean, 
they're lost. Is it fair to like? Is it fair to like? Um, uh, would it be fair from our our perspective or my perspective to say that like it just seems to map onto it, like the the ether theory, the ether theories and the uh, time because like time space seems to fulfill all the all the. Uh, the same you know, thing. I like. don't think so. No, I think if I were to interpret it and again, just trying to unravel what I call their Gordian knot, which isn't very easy, is <laughs> that their space time is way linked to gravity and not light. Okay. And light seems to be sort of pushed aside they, mm -hmm. they I mean, they're doing gravitational waves, right? With LIGO proclaiming to find those, even though two De Denmark physicists did analysis and <laughs> said it was just noise. Um, instead of uh, in those people, instead of of accepting that, they literally spent two years sending people over to the two physicists to indoctrinate them into what they should be seeing. So these people, the the mainstream has really abandoned light a lot. They have really abandoned it. The photon is the closest they've gotten to it. Um, they will say that it's a photons admitted. They they talk about it at the subatomic level, right? Um, you know, with a photoelectric effect, um, and they pretty much stuck with that. But if you get into um, the photon, they're going to be getting into quant the weirdness of the universe. And the weird, you know, the universe isn't Newtonian. That's what they'll say. The universe isn't Newtonian. It's weird. It can't be all Newtonian. Here's why. It's because they don't. They've never addressed light and frequency and color and any of that. So <coughs> they have empirical equations to explain things but they don't have a physicality to explain it it's still a photon and the photon fails miserably and in, in the wave area so, cool that's about all i have thanks okay. for your time man. all right well thank you very much i really appreciate it um anybody else of course uh, can always come in in the green room we're coming up to five minutes till but um we got all kinds of people saying things about their models and nothing admits light um well, whatever that means. Again, you have to have your models. Uh, you know, again, today was just to try to come up with a new idea that for ether that either has to be explained or it it, it makes it a, not a good model. Um, I think it would just I thought it was an interesting thing. I've never seen that explanation. <laughs> I think it's a valid one. I think uh, Franklin's on the right. Uh, <clears throat> path to to be able to <clears throat> if you're an etherist you better be able to explain why those things are <clears throat> around and stay around um and why you know why would that would that would be so um it says since you are knowledgeable about different ether theories what do you think about the steven rado ether theory well i did read about it I, i'm not up to date on it um i would be you know if you uh I could read about it for sure, or somebody could present it. That's the best thing. So Super Principia Mathematica, I know you are not a fan of mine at all, but it um, doesn't bother me. I, don't, I have no emotional attachment to that. And that's totally fine. But if you want to uh, pr you know, present the Stephen Rado theory, that uh, model, that would be fine. Uh, I did. I know Stephen Rado. I've read some of his work, but you know, my little brain can only hold so much. I don't remember it uh, per se especially since my father and I've been working on a different model for a bunch of years. My, my, my brain can only hold so much. So, uh, but love to hear from anybody who has their ether model wants to explain things. Anybody's model. It's welcome. This is what this group is. I'm not here to tell you, you can't, I don't believe in ether. So don't even try to explain it to me. Nope. I'm always interested in learning about how models work and uh, their and people's ideas. So, all right. So, all right. We're going to take this out as we normally do. And I want to thank everybody who came by today. Um, and I hope you understand that I'm not here to say that ether models are wrong. I myself don't like the model, was wanting to come up with a major objection that I thought. And I came up with a new one. Is it a major objection? This is, uh, can, I, I came up with a couple of weeks ago after decades of trying to find something. And, uh, I think it's interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed that stimulating thought. And again, if you want to help us out, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We want to get a, at least a thousand to on the uh, CMPS uh, YouTube channel. 
um, and Dissident Science. I want to thank all my listeners and all my subscribers for subscribing. We hope you uh, enjoy this. I know Tao Lin in, and it will be doing some of his mandala drawings and listen to this. I want to shout out to you and thank uh, him for coming on. And again, if you have anybody who you think should be on that would be interesting to talk about, or if you want to come on and be one of the hosts here, uh, you like this kind of stuff and and like to talk about it and think you can do what I'm doing much better, which isn't that hard, folks. <laughs> I never claim to be good at this. So uh, I do have at least empathy and uh, respect to everybody who who does things that I do have. I respect every person here who's trying to fight for some new ideas. If you have your own model and sticking to your guns, I will support you to the end much more than I support uh, universities who try to tell us there's only one answer because there isn't only one answer. And so thank you so much, everybody, for this. And uh, let's uh, get ourselves out of here with some of what we're all about here. I'm David Hillsman. Remember, I say, say, stay critical, stay thinking. I'm your science therapist trying to get you to the promised land to become a critical thinker, open up your minds, realize that everything we're told about science doesn't have to be true. And a lot of it isn't true. And that there are great people, great minds outside of mainstream moving science forward. That's the way it always has been. And that's what this show is about. Ciao for now.